Hey wife, what are you holding there? A queen and therium. It's been a year since my last video on therium, so I thought I'd make an update. What changes have you seen in this plant over the last year? It's grown massively and gotten more beautiful, and the leaves are almost three feet long. Yes, and what problems are we having now? Well, when you bought the plants two years ago, the plants were only about three inches tall, but now they've grown massively and we're having problems finding enough space for all of these large plants. Thanks, Janine. I never imagined when I bought these plants two years ago that they would grow so large and beautiful. Today I'm going to share with you some tips on how to grow your own plants to this size. Hey Janine, I want to have you take a measurement of this leaf so we can see how long it is. in excess of 37 inches. That is amazing. Let me zoom in on that. Yep, 37 inches. Thanks, Janine. Here's a picture of a queen I received two years ago. You can see how small it is. And here's some video of the same plant. Here are the same two queens last year growing in one gallon pots. And here they are today. As you can see, much larger than last year. Tip number one is increase your pot size as soon as possible. I see a lot of YouTube videos where people are growing queen anthuriums and Ikea cabinets in small pots. You're never going to get a large plant doing that. You've got to increase the pot size as soon as possible. I started this plant with this little pot when I got it. Then probably six months later I put it in this pot. And maybe another six, six months later I put it in a one gallon pot. And then from the one gallon, I went up to this two gallon. As soon as you see that the roots are growing near the edge of the pot, you can put it in the next size up. I will say when I put it in this two gallon pot, probably the second or third leaf came out dramatically larger than any leaf I'd ever grown before. And I was really floored at how large the leaf was. There's no question that jumping from the one gallon to the two gallon pot made a huge difference in, in leaf growth. I'm growing most of my anthuriums and sphagnum moss with some growth stone added. But I've also had good results with your standard aeroid mix. The key is that you need good aeration in your mix so that the roots don't rot. Water should flow fairly easy through your mix. Here's a close-up of both plants. This plant is grown in a standard aeroid mix and it's got this uh, root uh, extender I bought online and it is growing up up and away. Here's the other queen and it's growing in a sphagnum moss and this plant has a more uh, compact growth pattern which I really like and again it has beautiful leaves. Well I've reached a dilemma with these two large anthuriums they're both growing in two gallon pots, as I stated, but they're ready to pot up into bigger pots. And I've been sort of holding off, uh, trying to decide exactly what I want to do. This is a three gallon pot, which is larger, but not a lot larger. And this is a five gallon pot, which is probably the correct size for me to pot up to. And that's something I'm going to probably do with at least one of these plants. But the dilemma I'm having is I'm running out of room for these big pots. They take much more room so I'm not sure how I'm gonna work this out. In the wild, these uh, leaves can get up to six feet long, so I'm thinking there's probably room to get even larger leaves if I pot them up into larger pots. This is Anthurium luxuriens. What a beautiful plant. I bought this plant two years ago, and this is what it looked like when I bought it. And as you can see now, it is just gorgeous. It just put out this uh, leaf here in the last month, and it's. 23 inches long, beautiful green hues. I just love this plant. Here's Janine holding the plant so you can see the scale of how large this plant has gotten. It dwarfs Janine's size, it's so big now. This plant has overgrown its two gallon pot and is now ready for a five gallon pot. So I'll probably pot it up here any day. Here's tip number two, and it concerns water. I read on the internet some people were watering their plants maybe once every 12 days. 
That is just not enough water. These plants live in the rainforest where it rains almost every day. They're just drenched in water. So I've used a watering schedule that just worked very well for me as you can see here. I water these plants twice a week. I give them a full drenching water twice a week in the summer. But in the winter, I'll give it a full drench once a week. And then midweek, I'll give it maybe half as much water. These plants are basically getting water twice a week. Now you've got to make sure that the medium they're growing in is free flowing for the water to fall through it. And if you have your standard aeroid mix or if you're using sphagnum moss, the water should just flow right through the pot. In terms of water quality, I'm using reverse osmosis water, which has worked well for me. Now it's possible that tap water would also work well. I just haven't used it. And in terms of fertilizer, I'm fertilizing three out of four weeks. And I'm using this MSU fertilizer, but you can probably use any, any orchid or plant fertilizer will work well for these plants. But to sum it up, don't skimp on the water. Water these plants frequently. I'm going to water a plant now so you get an idea of what I'm talking about with drenching. I'll go ahead and start watering this plant. Keep watering it until we really see the water coming out the bottom of this thing. All right, we've got a good trenching now. So I think that's the kind of watering we're talking about. You can't have a queen anthurium without a king anthurium. And here are my two anthurium vecchii. I'm growing these in a south facing kitchen window for the past eight months because I ran out of room in my dining room. I'm gonna go ahead and move these to the kitchen counter so we can get a better look at these two beautiful plants. Here are the two vecchii on the kitchen countertop. Although these aren't a velvet-leafed anthurium, they are still stunning. I can see why they're called the king. With the ribbing, the deep green color, and the elongated leaves, they are just stunning. Wow, you definitely need to have these plants on your list. Uh, each plant has about nine leaves, so they, they do produce a lot of leaves. And the, uh, the longest leaf uh, I measured was uh, 27 inches. Here's Janine holding the Anthurium vecchii just to give you an idea of how large this plant is. Hey Janine, why don't you shake, just move the plant there, you can see how big these leaves are. Beautiful. Thank you Janine. Here's what the plants looked like when I bought them two years ago. You can see a small vecchii here in the front and then another one behind it. The leaves are tiny, maybe one to two inches. So it's had a, a exponential growth over the past two years. Vecchii come in two forms, a narrow form and a wide form. And what this is relating to is how narrow or wide the ribbing is on the leaves. The plant on the right here is supposed to be a narrow form. And then the plant on the left it's supposed to be a wide form. To be honest, I don't see any difference between these two leaves. They seem the same to me, but they're both beautiful anyways. This vetchii is growing in a two gallon pot in a standard aeroid mix, and it is definitely ready to be planted in something larger. This vetchii is growing in a five gallon pot. I moved it to a five gallon pot about six weeks ago and since then I've had a dramatic change in this plant that I'd like to share with you. Uh, a five gallon pot is a lot of sphagnum moss and I was able to find it on sale at Home Depot so it actually came out pretty cheap to move it into this large pot. One of the things I love about vecchii is they stay low in the pot and don't climb so they're much easier to manage. So the interesting development that occurred after moving it into this five gallon pot uh, five or six weeks ago is that this plant has formed a satellite plant. This, this came up recently, and this is another plant next to the mother plant right here. As you can see, it's forming a new leaf right there, while this is also putting out a new leaf. So this uh, five gallon pot is gonna have two plants growing in it. The other two gallon pot uh, doesn't have this type of growth pattern, and I'm guessing because the pot is too small. So it's gonna be pretty exciting to see how this new leaf develops. Now for my third tip for growing large anthuriums, and that is light. Anthuriums grow in the tropical forests of Colombia. 
They get filtered sunlight all day long, but this sunlight is intense as it's near the equator. So these plants are really getting quite a bit of sunlight. If you want to grow large anthuriums indoors, then you'll need to supplement their light. And the easiest way to do that is through the use of LED lights. I've been growing all these plants under LED lights since I bought them and they've all been flourishing. Now the two vecchii, I did have to move them to the south facing kitchen window as I ran out of room. And they seem to be doing okay, but I believe they would grow better if I could supplement their light. Here are some of the LED lights I've used with good results, but really any full spectrum LED grow light should work well for you. I'd like to show you now where the anthuriums are growing in my dining room. This is one of my orchid collections and it's growing under an LED light. But let's pan to the right and we'll see one of the queen anthuriums. And this is the queen that grows in sphagnum moss and it's growing in the corner of this dining room. And if we pan upward, you'll see the LED light above it. This is the queen that grows in sphagnum moss. This queen has been in this location for probably a year now, and previous to that, it was growing with the orchids. Here's the Anthurium luxuriens growing next to the queen. And we'll pan upward and you'll see that it's under two LED grow bulbs. And the reason for the black plastic is to keep the lights from blinding my eyes. It's not the most beautiful aesthetic looking setup. Here's the other queen anthurium growing in another corner of the dining room. And you'll see it has a few grow light LED bulbs illuminating it. It's been in this location for almost a year. I turned the LED lights off. And I wanted to share with you one of the problems of LED lights is how do you suspend them above the plants. I've been using the PVC tubing, also the back of a chair. You just have to get creative and find a, a solution that will allow you to suspend these lights. Also, once they're suspended, you'll, as the plant grows larger, it will grow towards the lights and you may have to either raise the lights higher up or lower the plant lower. When these plants are under a foot tall, it's relatively easy to get good coverage with an LED light. But once these plants really take off and start to grow large, you'll find that it's much more difficult to get good LED light coverage. In terms of how long I have the lights on, in the summer I have them on for 16 hours a day. And then in the winter I cut it back down to 12 hours a day. If you are using LED lights, I would recommend you buy a PAR meter. A PAR meter measures the available light that a plant can use in PPF units. The key is this number is reproducible between different lights. So I'm going to go ahead and take some readings for you to see what my plants are getting. Here at the base of this plant, it's getting about 220 PPF. Then I move it up to this leaf here and it's getting about 480 PPF. So that's the range, you know, about 500 down to 200. Now, if I take this monitor, and put it at the base of this plant down here, it's only getting 50 PPF. That would not be enough to grow these plants. I'm going to go ahead and take some PPF readings of the King and Therium that's by the kitchen window so we can see what kind of numbers it's getting. When you take these readings, you have to set the, the monitor to sunlight, which I've done. So here we are, we're getting about uh, 900. I'm gonna go ahead and put the monitor here and you'll see kind of light readings we're getting. Yeah, there's a thousand. The key is it's only getting this amount of light for maybe one or two hours a day and that's it. It's uh, not getting this direct sunlight all day long. And that's a very nice number. Now we're going to take a reading of a leaf that's in the shade in the kitchen window and see what kind of reading we get here. Yeah, the PPF is only 49. That is not, uh, not optimal. Uh, it would be wonderful if I could put a LED light over these plants in the kitchen, but that's not feasible. Really can't live with an LED light in the kitchen. So we just have to make do and just do the best we can. I'd like to share two more of my anthuriums. This is Anthurium crystallinum, and then behind it is Anthurium regal. Both these anthuriums are just gorgeous. This crystallinum is uh, really beautiful. And I really love its compact form. And uh, the green is so deep. It, it's just a gorgeous plant. That's not to say that the regal is not also beautiful, 
but it is becoming almost unmanageable. It's so large. Here's Janine holding the crystallinum. Dark velvety leaves. This plant should definitely be on your anthurium list. Both plants are growing in sphagnum moss in a two gallon pot. And both are in need of potting up to a larger pot size. I think a five gallon pot would be the best size for them. Because I've run out of room, I had to move the crystallinum to a kitchen window, as you can see here. And this is where I've been growing it for the last nine months. The regal has still been growing in the dining room, surrounded by um, LED lights. Now I'd like to talk about tip number four, and that is humidity, which is a big topic for anthurium growers. Unless you're using a greenhouse, I would stay away from the IKEA cabinet if you're growing it in your own home. People grow it in IKEA cabinets with 80% humidity, and the problem is the plant gets used to that humidity, and you really can't move it out of that IKEA cabinet. And as your plant grows larger and larger, what do you do next? You have to build a larger cabinet and it just becomes a nightmare. So my recommendation is to buy young plants and get them used to your own home humidity. The humidity in this kitchen is currently 48.8% and that's what the Crystallinum and Betchii have been growing at in this kitchen for the last six, eight months and they've had no problems. As long as you provide them light and water, I don't think the humidity is gonna be a problem. I was using this humidifier as you can see here but six months ago, I stopped using it. I thought it couldn't be making that much difference in a huge dining room like this. And since I stopped using it, there's really been no change in the growth. Let's check the humidity here in the dining room, right next to the Queen Anthurium. As you can see, it's only 44.3, even lower than the kitchen. The reason it's lower than the kitchen is that the LED lights are lowering the humidity. Here's a humidity reading first thing in the morning, and as you can see, it's 58%, much higher than the evening humidity. I'm guessing the humidity drops during the day as the room warms up. This queen has been growing in this room for two years in this 45 to 60% humidity range. And not only is it growing, it's thriving. Each leaf has been bigger than the previous leaf. The key is that you've got to buy your plant young and get it used to this humidity. Once you do that, you'll be free of the IKEA cabinet that limits the size of your plants. I don't know if it makes any difference, but every morning I take this mister and I mist all, all the plants. All the leaves get a little bit of water and the plant gets a little bit of water. Your plant won't be happy if it's being attacked by insects. So I apply this systemic house plant insect control every two to three months to the plant. It comes as a fine granule and you apply amount based on the pot size and it dissolves slowly over time. And I haven't had any pests using this product. So to summarize, we talked about maximizing your pot size, maximizing your watering, using LED lights, and growing your plants in your home humidity and not IKEA cabinet that would limit the size of your plants. I plan to do some updates as I move these plants to five gallon pots and see what kind of new growth we get. So subscribe to this channel for future updates and please give this video a like if you enjoyed it and thanks so much. If you have any questions about these plants, put them in the comments section and I'll do my best to answer them.